are listening to a team of loggers cutting down a pine tree near Mount Adams in the state of Washington, where the people act. The People Act. These are true stories, tape recorded in communities across the nation where people are working together to build a better future. The People Act is presented by the TV Radio Workshop established by the Ford Foundation and produced by the CBS Radio Network. Every voice and sound is real. No actors are used. Now, here again is your narrator, the noted reporter, Robert Trout. This is the story of nine small communities that had the courage to take an honest look at themselves and what happened as a result. The Mount Adams area in the state of Washington, the big timber country, the pine and fir country, some of the most spectacular scenery in the world. Keith McCoy has lived there most of his life. Mount Adams uh, is the second highest peak in the Pacific Northwest, 12,307 feet high, and is perpetually snow-capped. The terrain in this area is uh, extremely rugged, and the uh, town of White Salmon is particularly spectacular in that it sits atop a bluff approximately 500 feet uh, directly above the Columbia River. 6,500 people live in the Mount Adams area, in the nine towns, on the farms, in the logging camps, on an Indian reservation at the mouth of Klickitat River. We went into a logging camp near the town of White Salmon. The loggers were getting ready to bring down a big 200-foot pine tree. Bill, uh, let's put it right across the coulee there in between them two trees. Yeah, I think it'll do all right there. Now, we'll cut the notch in now, and then we'll start in the back. All right. Power saw bites into the five foot thick trunk. The loggers swing their big two headed axes. They go to work with a handsaw. The big tree begins to lean. Timber! crash of falling trees resounding through the valleys. 75% of the economy of the area is based on timber. What do you want us to cut out of here? Cut her clean. Don't leave a stick in it. And then after you get, you should be through here by tomorrow night, and we'll go over section 40. Clean that too? Ever stick on it. Don't leave a thing. Some loggers stripped the land, and some people worried about it. Bad logging practices weren't the only problem. Grocer Jack Aldall. We're operating on a lopsided economy here when the snow is deep, our logging shuts down, and and uh, we're all done for three or four months except to sit around and draw rocking chair money. Well, there isn't a community in the nation that can operate on an eight or nine months income and, and three or four months idleness. But nobody seemed to care. One day, county welfare agent Gene Hayes went to a merchants association meeting in White Salmon and heard something that made him mad. Oh, what are you worried about? Can enough timber up in those hills last another 20 years? I don't think very much of that kind of thinking. We shouldn't be talking about this matter of 20 years in a community like this. No community should uh, think of its uh, term of its life uh, in, in such a brief, brief period as this. God gave us everything, and what are we doing with it? We're slashing it off of here uh, so fast that within five years, this will be a ghost town. When Gene Hayes went home that night, he was so disturbed he couldn't sleep. The next morning, when I went down to my office, still thinking about this uh, same problem, 
uh, still in a very low and despondent uh, frame of mind about it, I found on my desk a little brochure from uh, Harper Brothers Publishing Company. And according to my usual practice, I started to throw this into the waste paper basket. Then I noticed that the uh, title of the book that was being advertised was uh, The Small Town Renaissance. It seemed to me that that was about what we needed in this area. Gene Hayes got the book and sat up all night reading it. It suggested a program for small towns. He got excited, got his friend, Superintendent of Schools Hayes Holman, to read it too. Well, why shouldn't we write to the state college or the university uh, about this and see if there's any thinking uh, along the line of doing the same thing here in the state of Washington? After all, they, these institutions belong to us, don't they? Well, yes, that's correct, and I feel like that even though they may not have a program set up, if we write and ask them, we might be able to get some help. Coincidence, the author of the book, Richard Poston, was at the University of Washington setting up a department to help communities work out their problems. Gene Hayes and Hayes Holman rounded up a few leading citizens. Where are you fellas going, anyway? Well, we're going to take a little trip up to Seattle, up the university, and talk to the people up there about this community. Well, we're going to try to get them to get on the ball and uh, help us along a little bit down here. Bye. Bye. See you later. Mr. Poston, I'm Hayes Holman, Superintendent of Schools at White Salmon, Washington. I've been looking forward to this for a long time, Mr. Holman. I'm Wally Stevenson. I operate a sawmill down in Benjamin, just below White Salmon. Very glad to know you, Mr. Stevenson. Thank you. I'm Collins Finch and Mayor of White Salmon. Mayor Finch, mighty happy to have you here. I'm Roy Barton, President of Security State Bank. Glad to know you, uh, Mr. Barton. Won't you gentlemen uh, sit down? We can... Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Well, we've been discussing some of our problems, and we felt like since the university belonged to us, we might as well try to make use of it. I like to hear you talk that way, Mr. Holman, because the university does belong to you, and unless you use it, you're wasting your money to pay for it. Well, we definitely need some kind of guidance to direct the work, and we were in hopes that the university could furnish that leadership. Well, Mr. Holman, every community everywhere has talent to develop its own resources. And our program is to help you develop that talent, to help you help yourselves. It's going to be your study. You're going to have to make your own decisions and handle it in any way you see fit. We're just there as your helpers. Driving back to Mount Adams, they worked out a plan. They got a few people together and set up a study group. They held a meeting in the White Salmon High School cafeteria. 56 people showed up. The meeting will now please come to order. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to discuss a controversial question about our timber yield, how long it was going to last, and whether this area would be uh, a ghost area within some five years. Mount Adams Sun editor Bernard Pollard and insurance agent Hub Strain made a proposal. We all know that we like to talk, and a few people, including myself, are apt to monopolize the conversation. I think that we should have some means to draw... Uh, individual discussions to a close. There should be a limit on it. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We just got an alarm clock here. As soon as somebody starts to talk, we're going to turn this alarm clock on. That's three minutes. And that's all, brother. Three minutes enough for anyone to talk. Lumberman Ted Paulson, Bernard Pollard, and Hub Strain got into an argument. You've all read the paper and you saw the article about... Uh... White Salmon and Benjamin becoming uh, ghost towns uh, within the next three to five years, which I think is rather misleading publicity. Well, as an editor, I want to explain in the first place that that article emanated from a person within the committee, exaggerated a certain remark that uh, probably wasn't verified by the, the what actually occurred. Nevertheless, we all know the timber situation here is getting critical, and a small logger is already hard put to it to find anything to log. Well, Bernard, uh, I, I believe that you're wrong, and I believe that Ted's wrong. Both of you are wrong. The first place, you got so much timber out here, and you're cutting it at an awful rate. Now, you know very well that if they're going to slash the logs like they're doing that, you know that we're not going to have our timber. And if we don't have our timber, we don't have any other industry here, and we're certainly going to have a ghost town. The argument spilled out of the study group into Berry's Cafe, Pete Peterson's Bank, Tommy Burtwell's Gas Station, Willie's Barber Shop, Jack Aldall's Grocery Store. Once we got started, why, 
It was so fascinating to hear us analyze our own ailments that we just couldn't resist going down. It, uh, it was apparently an open forum type of a deal, and uh, we had a little professional guidance, of course, and how to analyze ourselves. But we got along fine. In fact, uh, lots of nights we weren't sure whether we were even going to get home because it, things kept going on and on. Now, we have about 120 people here. And it's going to be impossible for us to discuss uh, this question uh, with the whole entire group. So we're going to uh, divide up into about, uh, well, I think we better make it about five buzz sessions. In order to do that, we'll start counting in uh, groups of five. You people over at this table start the numbering off, one, two, three, four, and so forth. We'll go around until uh, we have got you all counted off. All right, let's start out numbering over here. One. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, one, two. Something began to come out of the buzz sessions. They began to analyze what was wrong. Let's uh, summarize some of our problems. One is that uh, too many logs are going downriver. Another one is uh, probably that we are using very destructive logging methods. And uh, I think we are all agreed that uh, we are very badly in need of much better land management than we have practiced in the past. I think it's perfectly feasible for us to increase our manufacturing facilities provided the uh, interested capital could be assured of an ample log supply for the future. They started to see that timber wasn't their only problem. Dick Poston talked it over with some of them in front of Heman's grocery store on Jewett Avenue in White Salmon. The timber is the uh, uh, basis of your economy. I've gathered that already. But of course, uh, loggers, uh, just the same as other people, uh, uh, go to school and they have uh, health problems and they uh, have uh, street problems and all sorts of uh, uh, civic uh, facilities that need to be uh, uh, provided for. And so we, uh, the, the purpose of this program is to look at the total life of the community and find out what we can do to make it a better community in all ways. The study group began to branch out to look into every part of the community, health, schools, sanitation, roads. The study group lasted for 20 weeks. Then came the big final meeting. The members were ready to act. They listened to summations of what they'd found out. They suddenly realized the size of the job they were taking on. They were overwhelmed. That final wind-up meeting of the study group was a pretty gloomy affair. There was a lot of disorganization, not unwillingness, but inability to get together on where we go from here on the action phase of this thing that's so important to all of us. Uh, the meeting ended on a somewhat discordant note, and believe me, there were a lot of sad people in the community. Next day at the regular coffee session at Barry's Cafe, everybody was talking about what had happened the night before. Say, what's the matter here? This is the gloomiest coffee session I've walked into for a long time. What's the trouble? Well, did you attend that meeting last night? I sure did. How did, how did it uh, look to you? How did it sound? Well, we sure didn't make the progress we all expected. What are you all looking so gloomy about, though? You don't know what to do about it. it. Has to be streamlined, that's for sure. You got any ideas, Keith? Let's hear them now. Well, we sure have to do something about it. We certainly aren't going to all knock ourselves out or throughout the community for 22 weeks and let it die on the vine like this. Boy, that's what it looked like last night. Tell you what, let's do. I'm going to forgo coffee this morning. Uh, Wally, you call Gene Hayes and Ted Paulson and uh, Roy, you call a couple of three fellas and all of you get on the phone. Uh, 30 minutes, let's meet over at my office and I'll bet you within... Well, by noon, we can have a plan worked out, and we can call another meeting, and we'll have this thing on a paying basis. They met in insurance agent Keith McCoy's office, sat down, and talked it out. Well, it was quite magical the way that thing worked out. Uh, we got around a big desk, got those who were most directly concerned with the project together, and believe it or not, within 30 minutes, we had the thing back on its feet and rolling stronger than ever. But it wasn't easy to decide what to do first. Housewife Lillian Hiltz had a suggestion. How about tackling one thing at a time? Getting the community all head up in one, uh, one drive and, and centering our attention on it, working it through to the end, and then going to another thing. But then we come to the point, what should we tackle first? Well, uh, no matter what it is, if we could have a planning council to decide 
what project each group's going to do, it seems to me we wouldn't waste our efforts. And what money we have, we could at least spend wisely, whether it's for recreation or busy work or whatever you want to call it. They set up a planning council. The main long-range program was to do something about their timber. Federal Soil Conservation Supervisor Roy Johnson worked with them. We have thousands of acres of privately owned land here, and I believe that if we can get the people, the landowners, to see the, uh, the need, and not only the need, but the fact that it's economically feasible now to grow trees for a crop. Why, if we can do this, sell the people on the idea, I think we will help our community a great deal in that extent. Their second long-range job was to make them less dependent on timber. They looked into possibilities for other industries and stumbled on Homer Spencer's lava cave. We have the same amount of space here, about a million and a half cubic feet of, uh, of area, which runs oh, between 42 and 44 degrees of temperature and 90 to 100 percent humidity, which is, a, is exactly ideal for the curing of uh, a rope for type of cheese. Now, if we can develop this uh, potential here, we can have one of the, uh, oh, rather, leading industries in the state. They had big plans for the Mount Adams area. Why can't we develop? Why can't we get good big industries in here? My goodness, we got the, the Columbia River in front of us. It's a river here that never slows down in its flow. That is our greatest resource, is that Columbia River. We're only 60 miles from the, the ocean. We can bring in raw materials, process them here, and take them on out. Other people are getting in good factories. We could get them in, too. They got action on every front. Grocer Jack Aldall. Some of the white salmon businessmen and, uh, realized that uh, our merchandising methods might be some of the reasons why the trade was going on in this area. And so uh, it was suggested by someone that uh, possibly the university could send down a man who knew more about selling than the rest of us and maybe teach us something. Well, I jumped at that. I believe over 50 of us that attended it, and I think that it has been noted that merchandising methods have been better in our area since those merchants have attended. I know I've cleaned up a few of my uh, bad deals. However, in the country grocery store, I still wear dungarees because most of my customers wear dungarees. Dr. H.L. Moon got so enthusiastic about what was going on that he donated his equipment and came out of retirement to run the school health program. Open your mouth. Say, ah. Ah. Throat's okay. Have you had any sore throats lately? Mm, one or two. This winter? Uh-uh. Any cough? Uh-huh. Where, deep down in your chest? Uh, I don't know. High up in your throat or way down here? Up here. Tickle cough, huh? Have you had any earaches at all? Look uh -uh. at your ears. That looks all right. How about the other one? Even got a morse, didn't you? They worked on the streets, built parks, cleaned up the towns, overhauled their schools. Where men had done so little, they were beginning to do much. They felt a new pride, a new community spirit. They looked for a way to express it, and they hit on an idea, a pageant they could all take part in. Talked about it at Max Walther's variety store. The more we have in uh, uh, people doing things with their own hands, no matter uh, what the results of it are as far as uh, uh, professional standards are concerned, the better, because we have lost our capacity to do things, uh, active things. Uh, the pageant, for all purposes, in examining history will have the effect of uh, uh, telling people the story of their lives. In other words, in effect, uh, 1,200 people will be telling themselves what they've found out about themselves. The pageant opens in June. The rehearsals are going on right now. All right, we want well, about uh, 100 people over on there, 100 dancers representing Mount Adams. And now uh, all you squaws who are dancing with the uh, squaw maiden, uh, get over here on this side, right behind Mount Hood. Be careful up there. Those mountains are loaded with fireworks. They're going to erupt before this thing is over. Don't smoke up there. There's a big 10-foot Indian drum over here uh, with 12 Indians around it, and at the other side of the stage, there's another one. Are you all ready? All right, let's have the drums over on the pato side. All right, where are the drums? Drummers? Indians, get to your drums. <laughs> all right, let's hear the Mount Hood drum. Build it up a little louder. 
Electricians, put a light on it. Mount Adams drums. Lights. Spot on the Squaw Maiden. Dancers. All right, you Squaw Maidens, come in across the stage. A little faster, pick it up. All right, a chant from the warriors. The pageant is a symbol of the changes the people have been making in nine small communities near Mount Adams. Keith McCoy pinned down the most important thing they've done. The study group uh, has done a number of outstanding things for this community, but primarily it has given us a new awareness of our problems. We have very honestly and very thoroughly turned the searchlight on ourselves and now we know who we are, what our problems are, and, above all, what we can do about it. That's the story we recorded in the Mount Adams area of the state of Washington. What is its meaning? Dick Poston. Of course, we're interested in building job opportunities. We're interested in making a better school system, improving the streets, and uh, providing more health facilities and so on. But, but why, actually, do we want to do all these things? And I think the answer might be something like this. America as a whole, uh, can be no stronger than her local communities. If uh, our local communities are apathetic and dull and indifferent to their own future, then that means that America is dull and apathetic to her own future. So if we're going to have a strong America, we're going to have to make our local communities function in a vital and realistic way. We're going to have to make this business we so glibly call democracy mean something and we're going to do that only by doing it at home in our own local communities You have just heard The People Act, narrated by Robert Trout, a documentary series presented by the TV radio workshop established by the Ford Foundation and produced by the CBS Radio Network. These programs are under the sponsorship of the National Committee for The People Act. Here is the committee's director, Elmore McKee. The citizens of the Mount Adams area have shown what free people can do to tackle their local problems. We would like to know your reactions to this story. We do not suggest that its details can be applied everywhere. But if you feel that this story has a bearing upon a problem in your community, and you would like to do something about it, won't you write us at the People Act Center, State College, Pennsylvania. Dr. Milton S. Eisenhower and his associates there will try to put you in touch with someone in your vicinity qualified to consult with you. If you wish a script or a recording for use in your community, please write us at the People Act Center, State College, Pennsylvania. The People Act is produced by Irving Gitman, edited by Fred Free. Tape recordings for today's program were made at the Mount Adams area of Washington by reporter Dave Moore. Join us again next week when The People Act in Syracuse, New York.